Hey y'all! In this video, I'm going to answer a question I've received several times, and that is how to resize multiple objects at the same time. For this demonstration, I'm using Aspire version 10.019. However, this works exactly the same way in Cut 2D, Desktop, and Pro, and VCarve desktop and pro. Let's go ahead and get started. I was going to have a pattern all set up here and ready to go, but I decided no, I would rather show you how I create that pattern than we can progress from there. Let's imagine up here in this corner I need a series of circles. So I want to go ahead and use some guides. So let's go ahead and drag my first guide out, and I want to put it right at the 6 inch mark on my scale, the negative 6 inch mark. Okay, so there's my first guide. I'm going to go ahead and hover my cursor over that guide, right click, and instead of moving that guide, I want to create some parallel copies of these guides. So I want to create a new guide parallel to this one that's relative to this one. I do want a one inch position offset, so I want one inch between each guide, and I want to make a total of five guides. So I've already got one, I need four more. So I'll go ahead and change that to four, and we'll say create new guide. I can close that, and now I have my five guides here spaced one inch apart. Now let me zoom in here a little bit, and I want horizontal guides as well. So I'll come up here to my scale, and I'll drag a guide down, and I want to bring it down to the four inch mark here. Now I want a total of three guides down this direction, so I'll come up here and right click. And I'll create parallel guides. I want them relative to this guide. I want a total of three. I already have one. So let's go add another two. And for the position offset, because I'm moving back down in this direction, it's going to be a negative move. So I'm going to go negative. 1.0 and we'll create the new guides and there they are. So we can close this. Now at each one of these intersections I want a circle that's got a quarter inch diameter. Now I could go ahead into my create circle tool and set my quarter inch diameter and then come along and click to add one and then go down the line and keep adding them one by one. Or I can make this one circle here and create a linear array. Now, here we get into the situation where these guides are kind of in the way. So, again, I'm going to go ahead up here and turn them off. And I will select that first circle, come down under Offset and Layout and we'll create an array copy. Turn my guides on once again real quick here. I want a total of three rows in Y, and I want a total of five rows in X. So we already have my object size is quarter of an inch. I want three rows in Y, so we'll change that to three, and I want five columns in X. I'm going to space them offset. I don't want to use gap this time because I want the distance between these circles to be based on the center. So I want the center of these offset one inch from one another in both X and in Y. I'm going to go ahead and group the copies. And we'll go ahead and we'll click Copy. And that gives me all of my circles. So I can close this now. 
I can deselect, turn off my guides, and I have my 15 circles right here where I need them. It's now that I discover that instead of quarter inch circles, I needed to have three eighths of an inch circles. So I'll select one here. I forgot I grouped them, so I will ungroup them. So I can select one here, go in here to set selected object size, and I can change this to 3 eighths of an inch and come along and do them individually. But that's more of a pain than it's worth, especially if you have a project like this one in mind, where you have all of these circles. Going back through and doing each one of these circles individually would just be a nightmare. So, rather than doing that, we're going to select all of these circles and we're going to resize them all at once. And we'll do that using the offset tool. So, with all of my circles selected, I'll come over here under Offset and Layout and click that button. Now, I want to offset each one of these circles outwards. And I know I have quarter inch circles. I need them to be three eighths of an inch. So that means I need to add an eighth of an inch to the diameter. Now, here's where I've got to be careful. Because if I set the distance of this offset to one eighth of an inch, it's going to offset it an eighth of an inch this way, and an eighth of an inch this way, and an eighth of an inch this way, and an eighth of an inch this way. So it's actually going to be a quarter of an inch larger rather than an eighth of an inch larger. So what I need to do is I need to take that eighth of an inch, divide it by two. So just take the diameter, cut it in half. In this case, it would be a sixteenth of an inch. That's 0 0.0625. I don't have any sharp corners here to worry about, but it doesn't matter if this is checked or not. But two things I do need to do is I want to delete the originals, and I want to select the new vectors so that I have them selected out here. This is optional. You don't, strictly speaking, have to have select new, but for this demonstration, I do want them to be selected. We'll click offset, and each one of those circles was increased in size. I can come in here, close this, select just one, and it's now three eighths of an inch in diameter. All of these are the same. So, the important part of this is in the array copy to make sure to use offset instead of gap. Because what that does is it sets this array by the center of the circle so that when I come along and resize them, they stay in the same position. Now I can bring my, turn my guides back on, and we see they're still got the same spacing, the same location, only the diameter of the circle has been changed. That's how you would resize multiple objects. And it works on more than just circles. Let me turn my guides off here because I'm not going to need them for this part of the demonstration. And let's select some rectangles. And I want these rectangles to be 1.5 by 1. And I'm going to come out here and I'm just going to create a few. Now I discovered that I made them wrong. I need them to not be 1.5. I need them to be 1.25. So let's go ahead and select them all. Come back over here to Offset and Layout. 
Now in this case, I need them smaller. So I want them to come inwards. And I want them shrunk down by a total of a quarter of an inch. So here I'm going to enter one eighth of an inch. Point one two five. Again, I'm going to delete the original. Now here I do have square corners, so I want to make sure I have Create Sharp Offset Corners selected. Delete the original. I don't have to have Select New. We'll click Offset. Oh, I have two decimals there. Won't do that. Let's try it again. There we go. Close that. And now, if I check the size, it's an inch and a quarter instead of an inch and a half. So, it will work for rectangles, it will work for circles, it will work for ellipses. The only time you may have to do a little bit of experimentation to find out exactly how much you need to increase or reduce by is if you're doing stars or some odd polygons with an odd number of uh, sides. If you're doing hexagons or octagons, it's basically the same as a circle. Just make sure you have that Create Sharp Square Corners selected. Now, let's put this into something that is a more real-world situation. Let me go ahead and delete all of these. And I no longer need these guides, so I'll go up here to View, Guidelines, Delete all guides. Click that, and all my guides are gone. Let's say I want to create this cribbage board. Well, let's go ahead and make one. Now, if we look over here in Job Setup, my piece of material is 16 inches wide in X and 11 and a quarter inches high in Y. So, we're all set there. We'll come over here to our Clip Art tab. And I'll go up into Clip Art. Something that was included in version 10 is this category right here, 2D Game Layouts. And if we look down here, we have some cribbage board designs. I'm going to start with this cribbage board right here. It's a round one. So, I'll double click that to put it in the center of my material. Then I'll go back to my drawing tab. And right off the bat, we see that this pattern is bigger than my material. So I need to reduce it in size. The only problem is when I scale it down, it's going to scale down the size of the peg holes as well. That's where the ability to resize multiple objects comes in handy. So I want to resize this cribbage board to a 10 and a half inch diameter. So before I do that, what I need to do is I need to find out how big each one of these peg holes are. So I'll select and I see that these are grouped. So I'll come over here and click ungroup. Now, if you'll notice, all of these out here stayed solid pink lines, but these here are now separate vectors. That's telling me that there's more than one group involved here. So, I'll come back and I'll click Ungroup again. Now, all of these to the outside are ungrouped, but these are still grouped. Let's ungroup one last time. Now that I have them all ungrouped back onto their original layer, we can click off to deselect, and I can select any one of these peg holes go over to Set Object Size, and I see there an eighth of an inch diameter. Now, I probably could have done that by just selecting this one or this one, but I want to check more than one hole here because I want to make sure that they're all the same size. Okay, so now that I know they're an eighth of an inch diameter, I can close this deselect, and rather than try to 
select all of these circles again, I'm just going to go back through my edit menu and undo all of that ungrouping. And just keep going back and clicking undo ungroup vectors until I get back to the step before that. So now I can click off over here, select any of those vectors, and I see we've got my groups back. I need to know what size these peg holes are before I scale this down. When I scale this down, it's going to scale down the size of the peg holes. And I'm going to need to figure out how much I need to resize these peg holes by. So that's why we did all that. So now we can hold down the control key and tap the letter A to select all. Then we'll come over here to select, set selected object size. And I want to scale this down to 10 and a half inches in diameter. So I'll make sure I have link X, Y checked right here. Then I'll go with 10.5. Click Apply, and now the entire design has been scaled down to 10 and a half inches. We'll close that. Now I need to go back and ungroup these again just to see what diameter they are now and how much I need to increase them by. Now, for those of you who are wondering why I bothered regrouping these, it's because if I didn't, there's a possibility their positions could have changed when I did the rescaling. So to eliminate that, by grouping them together, they will maintain their position. So now I can ungroup them again. So let's go ahead and ungroup them once. And we see these four are now no longer a part of that group. I can click off. Select one of these, and I can be fairly certain that all the rest of these are going to be the same size now that I have checked them. Set selected object size. And we now see, sure enough, they did shrink in size. So here's how I figure out how much I need to increase their size by. I'll open up my calculator, and I'll take 0.125 minus point one one o three and I get point oh one four seven. Now again because I'm going to be offsetting this, that's the total amount I need to resize by. I'm going to divide that by two. That's how much I'm going to offset these vectors by. So, remember, 0 0.00735, we'll close this. Again, I'll go to Edit, Undo, Ungroup, so they're now regrouped. Have them all selected. Come down here to Offset, and I want to go Offset Outwards. Bring back my calculator, and I want to offset by... 00735. So we come over here and we go 00735. Delete original. Select new. Offset. We can close that. Click off. Now I can choose just any one of these. And we're back up to our 8th inch peg hole diameter. Check any one of these here. We're back up to our 8th inch peg hole diameter. So that is the easy way to resize a whole bunch of objects without the hassle of going through and resizing each one individually. Let's go ahead and select all of these. Then we'll hold down Shift, deselect these circles, deselect these vectors. So we have just our holes. 
and we'll group those. We're now ready to finish creating our cribbage board. I'll go ahead and I'll create this cribbage board right here so you can see how it's done. I've made a couple of changes to Vectrix design here. One thing you'll notice is this vector up here. This vector is used for a molding toolpath, which will give me a rounded over edge out here. The change I did is this. Type the letter N to go into node editing. And come over here and right click, delete span. I just eliminated that little return there. I don't, I don't want that. Now I can tap the letter N and zoom back out to get away from it. Deselect everything. Now I want to put the galloping horse in a dish out here. So I'll go down to clip art. I'll come down to animals and scroll down and there is the cantering Arabian it's called. Double click to put that in the center. I'll go back over to my modeling tab. Now I have made no changes to this model at all. I am going to add a zero plane to the top covering the model. That way when we do go to carve this if there's any roughness out here in the 3D model, that zero plane will fill that in. I did a video on this a few months back. I'll put a link to that video in a card up here right about now. So we can go back to our drawing tab now. We have our model. We have all of our vectors needed. We know our peg holes are the correct size. Let's go ahead over and start calculating some toolpaths. So the first thing I want to do is I want to do a 3D finishing toolpath. So with the model selected, I'll hold down Shift, and I'll select that vector right there, that innermost ring. Come up here to do a 3D finishing toolpath. And for this demonstration, I'll use my 16th of an inch tapered ball nose. I want to machine to the selected vector, meaning it's not going to machine any further than this circle. It is using a boundary offset of a sixteenth of an inch, so it may go beyond about a sixteenth of an inch here. I'm going to use a raster machine strategy with a raster angle of 40 degrees, meaning the bit's going to go back and forth in this direction here. So it's cutting across the grain at an angle, not directly across the grain and not with the grain. And we'll just call this 3D Finish, Calculate, and we'll preview that toolpath. Okay, and there is our 3D model. So we can close the preview window. And now I want to select all of these circles. And I want to select these three lines here. And I want to do a profile toolpath using a V-bit. So we'll come up here and we'll do this. And I'm going to cut them about a sixteenth of an inch deep. So again, 0, 6, 2, 5. And I'm going to use a 30 degree V bit simply because I want a real fine line. I want to machine on the vectors. Nothing else here is of any importance to us. And I'm going to call this profile V. Oops. Carve fat fingers and we'll calculate. Then we'll go ahead and we'll make that black so you can see it. And we'll preview that toolpath. 
And there we go. Okay, close our preview window. We'll go to the next vector. And that'll be our holes. I'll want to do a drilling operation. This is going to depend on the pegs you're using. For these pegs, I'm going to cut them about a quarter of an inch deep. And I'm going to use a 1 8 inch end mill. Word of caution, never use a drilling tool path with a downcut bit. Always use an upcut bit. Always. I know this from first-hand experience. You will start a fire. I did it. This isn't a uh, third-hand story from a friend of a friend of a friend. I did it. Don't use a downcut bit to drill. I'm going to peck drill and retract above the cutting start depth by an eighth of an inch as it pecks. We'll just keep drill one. We'll calculate. Then I'll go ahead and make these black so you can see them. And we'll preview. And there are my peg holes. If I zoom in on one, you can see by my readout down here, down below, they are a quarter of an inch deep. Again, depending upon the pegs you use, you might want deeper holes than this. This is for demonstration purposes only. Now we can close this preview window, go back to my 2D view. Now I'm going to select this outside vector right here. and Hold down Shift, select this small profile vector out here, Last. We'll click on the Molding Toolpath. And I did a video on an introduction to the Molding Toolpath previously. I'll put a link to that video in a card right here, right about now. For the Molding Toolpath, we have to select the drive rail or drive rails first. In this case, it's just this vector here. And then the profile you wish to extrude last. And that's this one right here. That's why I selected them in that order. Now here we have the tool path position. It's at the top of the material here. And it's going to cut a total of 0. 0.4412 inches. I'm going to use a quarter inch ball nose. I don't need a small bit. And we'll go ahead and we'll call this swept profile contour. We'll calculate it. And that's what that is going to look like. Let's go ahead and preview it. And that gives us a nice rounded edge that doesn't quite go all the way down. Now all that remains is a profile tool path to cut it out of the material. With my start depth to be zero, and I'm going to cut all the way through the material. So I choose to go about five thousandths of an inch deeper than the thickness of the material. So up here I'll select everything in the cut depth and type Z plus point zero zero five. Then tap the Equals button, and that gives me a cut depth. I want to use a quarter inch end mill. Select that, and I want to machine outside the vectors out here. I'll do a separate last pass of 0 0.01. I will add tabs. I'll make, uh, yeah, I'm going to make some pretty beefy tabs here. So they'll be a half inch long and a quarter inch thick. I'll click on Edit Tabs. And I want to put one here, 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 and here. Close that. And I'll ramp in smooth ramp over a distance of one inch 
and we'll call this profile cutout. We'll calculate. I'm getting the warning it's going to cut through the material. And we'll preview that toolpath. And there is our cribbage board. Now, I will use tabs in the final design, but let me undo that. Go back in here and I'm going to remove those tabs so I can preview this without those tabs. Preview selected toolpath. Let it cut it out. And the reason I removed those tabs was so I can double click here and remove the waste so you can get a good look at the profile. When I go to calculate the tool paths to actually carve this out, I will put tabs in the profile. But there's our finished cribbage board. It's got a nice rounded edge using that molding tool path. We know now that the peg holes are going to be the appropriate size of an eighth inch diameter. Even though we scaled the entire project down, I hope you got something out of this video. The takeaway is if you're going to have to resize a bunch of different objects, if you can find out what size you have, then what size you need. The easy way to do it is to select all of those objects, whether they're grouped or not, come over here and offset them. You'll need to figure out how much to offset and remember to check Delete Original. That way, if you have a bunch of objects, like in this case, you have no duplicates. So, I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, I do hope you'll give me a thumbs up. And don't forget, today at noon Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where we'll discuss resizing multiple objects, the clip art that I used in this project, or anything else that I've covered in this video. Again, that's today at noon Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel, and I'll put a link in the description box to that live Q&A. Those live Q&A sessions are a good reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And when you subscribe, click that little bell right next to that red subscribe button, then you'll be notified the next time I post a video or the next time I go live. So, I hope to see you this afternoon. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.